Salam dear listeners and welcome once again to Radio Sai Vintage Bhajan Classroom. I'm Team Radio Sai's Bishu and today we have in this program a beautiful bhajan dedicated to Lord Ganesha. We have done many vintage bhajans dedicated to Lord Shiva, Lord Krishna. Many of them actually are on Lord Krishna. There are few we have done in the past on Ganesha and this is one very beautiful one. Simple, soothing and vibrant bhajan on Lord Ganesha. So here is how the first line flows. जय 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 हे गजानना सो दिस इज व्हाट वी विल लर्न नाउ ब्रदर श्रीनिवासलु विल गिव अस अ स्लो डेमोंस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द ट्यून एंड देन विल मूव ऑन टू द रागा द बीट एंड देन विल ड्वेल ऑन एवरी वर्ड ऑफ दिस भजन एंड फाइनली वी विल लिसन टू हाउ दिस भजन साउंड्स व्हेन संग इन द सैंक्टम सैंक्टोरम इन प्रशांत नलेम So let's get started let's not lose time and begin getting familiar with the lyrics Jay 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 He Gajanana Parvati Nandana Subhanana Jay 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 He Gajanana Neelakantha Suta Gajanana Nitya Subhanga Gajanana Now that we know the lyrics, so here is how this bhajan beautifully flows. Brother Shini Vaslu now will give us a slow demonstration. This bhajan is being sung in the scale C sharp pancham. Jaya 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 he gajanana Jaya 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 he gajanana जय 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 हे गजानना जय 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 हे गजानना पार्वती नंदन शुभानना पार्वती नंदन शुभानना नंदन शुभानना पार्वती नंदन शुभानना जय 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 हे गजानना जय 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 हे गजानना शुभांगा गजानना नित्य शुभांगा गजानना नित्य शुभांगा गजानना नित्य शुभांगा गजानना जय 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 हे गजानना सो दैट्स द ब्यूटीफुल वाइब्रेंट भजन एडोरिंग लॉर्ड गणेशा ब्रदर श्रीनिवास लू रिवाइव दिस भजन फॉर अस इट यूज टू बी संग इन दर्लियर टाइम्स इन द प्रशांत नलियम मंदिर एंड फॉर दोज ऑफ अर्स हु आर कीन अबाउट द रागा ऑफ द भजन लेट अस हियर फ्रॉम मनीरुद अबाउट the swaras and the make of this bhajan so what are your thoughts on this bhajan anirudh saram vishu saram this short and sweet ganesha bhajan is based on rag mohanam uh, in the carnatic classical music and we refer it to as bhupali in the hindustani classical music you have five notes in the raga sare shuddri ga shuddh ga pada shuddha गे सरी का पद सरी सदा पद सद पद 
रे घरे सदा इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल रागा विथ लॉट ऑफ ब्राइटनेस इन इट यस एंड यू हैव मेनी भजन्स लाइक गणपति हो जय गणपति हो महागणपते नमोस्तुते एंड ऑफ कोर्स मेनी अदर आई मीन मेनी भजन्स ऑन मेनी अदर डेटीज लाइक कालातीताया सिद्धिरूपाय योगीश्वराय नमो जय जय देवी गिरिजा माता एंड सो ऑन या आई थिंक द लिस्ट इज एंडलेस इज या वन ऑफ दोज रागास इन विच वी हैव प्लेंटी ऑफ भजन प्लेंटी ऑफ भजन या एंड ऑल ऑफ देम आर वेरी सूदिंग टू हियर यस बी इट स्लो भजन एंड or fast bhajan yes yeah maybe you can just uh, do an alap or just stitch so many beautiful bhajans that fall into this raga i think just give a flavor of how this raga flows and how beautiful and vibrant it is yeah sure ah ah Krishna is adored as Mohanam because he's very attractive and this raga also is such an attractive raga yeah the names is so apt you know you have so many bhajans because i think so many lyrics get attracted to the raga <laughs> and the raga has attracted so many devotees to express their feelings to the lord yeah. so beautifully wonderful so let's move on and explore the beauty of the ganesh bhajan through the swaras Yeah so let's take the first line Jay 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 ahe gajanana 
ಸರಿರಿ ಗಗ ಪ ಪ ಪದ ಸ ಸ ಸರಿ ರಿ ಗಗ ಪ ಪ ಪದ ಸ ಸ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ನಂದನ ಶುಭಾನ ಸದ ಸದ ಪ ಪ ಗ ಗ ಪದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಗರಿ ಸ ಸದ ಸದ ಪ ಪ ಗ ಗ ಪದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಗರಿ ಸ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ ಗಜಾನನ ಸರಿ ರಿ ಗ ಗ ಪ ಪದ ಗರಿ ಸ ಸರಿ ರಿ ಗ ಗ ಪ ಪ ಪದ ಗರಿ ಸ ನೀಲಕಂಠ ಸುತ ಗಜಾನನ ಗ ಗರಿ ಗ ಗ ಗ ಸರಿ ಗರಿ ಸದ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ವೇರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುಭಾಂಗ ಗಜಾನ ಸಾಗರಿ ಸದ ಸದ ಪ ಗ ಪ ದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಗರಿ ಸ ಸಾಗರಿ ಸದ ಸದ ಪ ಗ ಪ ದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಗರಿ ಸ I guess the beat of the bhajan also is uh, the simple beat, right? Yeah, the simple beat, 8 beat. Adi Talam in the classical music and Kehrwa in the Hindustani classical music. Let's have the count and have the demo of the bhajan with the help of Kanjira. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Jaya, 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 gajana na. ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ ಗಜಾನನ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ನಂದನ ಶುಭಾನನ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ನಂದನ ಶುಭಾನನ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ ಗಜಾನನ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ ಗಜಾನನ beautiful thank you so much arvin sai and anirudh thank, thank you vishu sai ram sai ram, sai ram. so you are now done with learning how to sing this bhajan you know the beat of the bhajan you know the words of the bhajan you know the tune of the bhajan and now comes the most important aspect of bhajan singing which will help us to attune ourselves to bhagwan we have the tune in the bhajan but the tune will not help us to connect with the lord unless we learn to attune ourselves to the lord and the way to attune ourselves to the lord is to contemplate is to ensure that this bhajan is only a means to the end of experiencing the bliss that is sai bliss that is his beautiful form and we can begin to experience this only when we absorb and internalize what each bhajan is trying to communicate to us So let's take the first line of this bhajan. Jay 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 he gajanana Jaya means victory. He is a way of calling out endearingly and gajanana. Gaja is elephant, anana is face. So we are referring to the elephant face lord and we are saying victory to you O oh, the beautiful elephantine faced lord Ganesha. and it's so interesting that since that time bhagwan taught bhajans and inspired the devotees to do namasmarana every sai bhajan session always wherever it may be begins with a bhajan on lord ganesha if every sai bhajan session has aarti every sai bhajan session begins with adoration with the remembrance of lord ganesha and this is enough reason for us to dwell on this form of the lord 
If Bhagwan has given this much importance to Ganesha worship, it is because there is something that will do us good if we follow this practice with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. Many years ago, during one of the three sessions, Bhagwan was in a mood to read letters. Tray Brindavan is Bhagwan's abode in Bangalore, and his residence is called Tray. And the sessions that Bhagwan grants to the students inside Tray Brindavan are called Tray sessions. So one day Bhagwan was with the students and he was reading these letters, and as he was doing that, he picked up a letter from the bundle and he opened it and he started reading it, and then he took another. And this went on for quite some time. He was just picking one letter after another and reading the letters. The boys were simply watching Swami. And as he was doing that, suddenly inside one envelope there was a yellow cloth with a knot. And now Swami opened the envelope. Swami opened the knot, and when he opened the yellow cloth, inside that there were few black coins. And Swami now started distributing these coins. to the boys who were sitting in the front and one boy who received these coins is a student by name venkat raman and he was very lucky because bhagwan gave him three four coins and he was so happy that you know he received these coins directly from swami's hands he has no clue what the significance he doesn't know what he has done to receive such a blessing but you know it just happened that he happened to sit in the front that day and swami opens this letter that day and swami puts in his hand these coins So he said with a lot of happiness he was returning to the hostel after Bhagwan retired once the three session was over and as he was coming back Dr Ravi Kumar who was then a faculty member in the department of chemistry there and a teacher who stays with the boys in the hostel currently he is of course the warden in the Brindavan hostel he saw that Venkat Raman was so happy receiving these coins and he was brimming with joy and you know So when Krishna man went and told Dr Ravi Kumar that how happy he was that Bhagwan has blessed him that day so beautifully and imagine his joy as he's talking to Dr Ravi Kumar he sees right in front of his eyes his parents walking into the ashram there was no proper information intimation to him that his parents are supposed to come that day they just landed up there and imagine his joy he's just coming back he's almost walking in the air because so happy bhagwan has given him such a beautiful blessing and there are his parents with whom else can you share such a joy with a lot of fulfillment other than with your parents and right in front of his eyes is his mother and he ran up to them and very excitedly showed the coins that bhagwan had just given him and when his mother saw those coins something happened and there were tears streaming down her face she just was stunned to silence and he thought what happened why is mother so moved why has her heart suddenly become like sponge and then the mother revealed that at that point in time Venkat Raman's father was actually going through a very bad phase in his life. His health was not good. They were living in Bilaspur in Madhya Pradesh. He was not satisfied with his job. There were many problems in the professional front as well as in the family. So both the parents went to an astrologer, a very reputed astrologer, and this astrologer told them that it would do good to them if they perform the Ganapati homam and invoke the blessings of Lord Ganesha. So Venkat Raman's parents then came to Trichy in Tamil Nadu because they had their ancestral house there and in that house they performed the Ganapati homam as per the tradition during the concluding rites which is called Purnahuti certain items have to be offered into the sacred fire and one of them includes coins So as the parents were offering the coins to that sacrificial fire Venkat Raman's mother was praying to Swami Swami please show me in some way that you have accepted our offering please give us some sign that this homam that we are doing has found its fulfillment and with that silent prayer they concluded the Ganapati homam and after the puja was done now they felt that having come to Trichy 
why don't we stop at Vrindavan and have Bhagwan's darshan? And so they just were stepping into the Vrindavan ashram, and here Venkatraman comes running to them, and imagine it is the same coin that they have offered in their home in Trichy. What more confirmation? What greater affirmation do they need about the power that is Lord Ganesha? The power. that is sai i always think that bhagwan so beautifully has his son lord ganesha welcome every devotee who comes to prashant nilayam in front of the eastern gate as well as the northern gate you have the temples of lord ganesha and it is like the sun warmly welcoming every devotee who has come to take the blessings of his father Shiva and Shakti who reside in the Prashanti Sanctum Sanctorum that is how profound the principle of Lord Ganesha is and that is how beautiful the worship of Lord Ganesha is that is how beneficial it is to chant the name of Lord Ganesha right at the very beginning all victory will be assured into our life if you always think of Lord Ganesha all obstacles will melt away and victory will be ours and that is what is conveyed jay 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 he gajanana victory to lord ganesha and victory to everyone who immerses in the principle of lord ganesha let's move on to the second line parvati nandana subhanana parvati nandana means the son of mother parvati nandana means son There's an interesting legend regarding Ganesha's birth. We know how once Mother Parvati was preparing for a bath and she wanted someone to stand as a guard. Lord Shiva always had the Nandi, the divine bull, as his security, and Nandi was always so loyal to Lord Shiva. And Mother Parvati felt that I also need someone like Nandi for me. And so, as she was having bath, she took a little turmeric. and applied it on her body and using that she created the image of a boy and that boy was so beautiful made of turmeric and mother parvati now breathed life into that boy charming child born out of the breath and the turmeric and the being of mother parvati and lord ganesha was not only beautiful but he was valorous he was not only loyal to his mother to his very bones he was also as powerful as shakti and so as mother was taking her shower she asked the newly created ganesha to look after her and to guard her privacy and so ganesha was there in front while her mother was in the inner chamber and it is at this point that lord shiva arrives and lord ganesha has no clue who shiva is he is just born and he does not allow anyone to go in and lord shiva is infuriated because who is this lad who is stopping me going to my own home and that is how a battle starts between lord shiva and his son and shiva is oblivious that it is actually his son but neither the father knows the son nor the son knows the father and that is how the battle happens and finally lord shiva has no other option but to behead his own son because he was so powerful there was no way he could be subdued finally lord shiva had to distance his head from his body and when this happened mother parvati immediately came and she was inconsolable and she started saying that i want my son back how could you do this it is our son and then lord brahma appears on the scene and suggests that lord shiva should replace the boy's head with the head of the first living being that he came across which lay with its head facing north and that is when lord shiva sends his army to find such a head and they find a dying elephant sleeping in this manner facing north and after the elephant dies they take that head and that is the head that is attached to the boy's body and that is how ganesha is recreated now with an elephant face this is how he becomes gajanana 
He was created by Shakti, but he was recreated by Shiva. We are all created by our mothers, but we are all recreated by the Divine Mother, isn't it? Once we come to Bhagwan, we are reborn because now begins a different journey of inner purification. And Ganesha now was more valorous than before, and Lord Shiva, recognizing the virtues of his beautiful son, calls him as Vinayaka, as the one who is the leader of all the celestial armies, all the celestial armies, and that is how he becomes Ganesha, the first god, the primordial lord. So this is the story of how Ganesha got the face of an elephant, but there is an inner deeper meaning to this story. One very powerful idea that is conveyed in this is how absolute loyalty to his mother made Ganesha absolutely invincible and get a position which was even greater than his father. Lord Shiva says that you are such a beautiful son you have surpassed even me. So even before anyone worships me, they have to worship you. We know the story of how Lord Ganesha takes, circumambulates around Mother Parvati and Lord Shiva when he's asked to go around the world three times because for him, his parents are the world. That is the ideal that Lord Ganesha sets to the world and that is the reason why Lord Shiva makes him the primordial deity. And it also teaches the whole world the power of a mother's love. Many years ago in the 80s, a student by name Satish joined Bhagwan school. And the mother, when she put this boy in Bhagwan school for the first standard, at that point itself, she made a prayer to Bhagwan and said, Swami, if you take my child now to your lotus feet under your umbrella, I have only one prayer and one condition. If you take him, you have to look after him completely. You have to look after his entire education. Only then take him now. And that is how it happened. This boy, Satish Kumar Putta, he joined Bhagwan school for his first class, for his first grade. And he continued to complete his entire Entire education in Bhagwan's institution, his schooling, his high school, his graduation, his post graduation, his second post graduation, everything happened. Almost 20 years he was studying in Bhagwan's school. And all this happened only because of the power of a mother's prayer. There were many times when he had these thoughts if he should continue here after his high school, after his. Uh, graduation but something happened and he continued and he continued and today he's so grateful to his mother because it was that prayer of the mother which ensured that all his student life he basks in the divine proximity of Bhagwan. Bhagwan says that there are five mothers for a person the physical mother or Dehamata and the cow that gives us sustaining milk Gomata the land that grows the crops that feed us, Mother Earth, Bhumata, the Holy Motherland in which we are born, Deshamata, and finally the heritage of spiritual treasure that revealed to us the aim and purpose of human life which will take us towards God-realization, which is Vedamata. Swami says that we should respect all these five mothers. So when we sing this line, Parvati Nandana Shubhanana, Shubham is auspiciousness. Let us pray to the Lord to fill us with this auspicious idea to revere all our mothers. Let us pay our obeisance to our physical mother, to our divine mother, to our motherland, to the scriptures as we sing this line. There is a sweet incident concerning Mother Parvati and Ganesha, the mother and the son, that happened way back in 1976. It was the occasion of Ganesha Turthi. Bhagwan had come to the hostel in Vrindavan, and along with him, Bhagwan had brought the Vedic scholar Brahma Shri Kamavadani Garu, and the distinguished guest was to perform the ritualistic worship of Lord Ganesha on that sacred day. The students had made the Ganesha idol, and Bhagwan personally came and he sat there to watch the entire proceedings and as the students performed the rituals, Bhagwan casually asked, Okay, 
so where is ganesha as a question out of the blue where is ganesha and you know everyone was speechless even kamavadani garu he didn't say anything and the next moment bhagwan very sweetly waved his hand and out came a beautiful silver idol of lord ganesha swami placed the idol in the shrine where the worship was going on and then swami said hmm how can the son be there without the mother the mother also should be there and again swami's hand moved in a circle and this time swami materialized a beautiful lovely statue of mother parvati and swami handed over this statue too and said mother parvati and her son lord ganesha both should be worshiped by the students this incident was so beautiful it remains etched forever in the minds of all the students who were a witness to this and it continues to inspire the students to always do their best when it comes to worshiping ganesha and the divine mother and that is how you have a beautiful legacy of very vibrant colorful creative celebration of ganesh chaturthi and prashantanam the students make fantastic chariots on the immersion day everything is one flight of creative devotional fantasy the whole cycle on thal is filled with amazing creations which are all outpourings of devotion in the form of beautiful imaginations and it is this blessing of lord ganesha and the mother which has ensured that every student who joins bhagwan's university leaves the portals of this institution with a feeling of utmost reverence for mother and utmost love for lord ganesha so that is this beautiful lesson that this line is teaching us about this connection between the mother and the child and the power of shakti parvati nandana shubhanana this is what will make all our life filled with auspiciousness let's move on to the next line neelakantha suta gajanana neelakantha Nilakantha is Lord Shiva we know that Lord Shiva is called Nilakantha because he took up the pain of the world in his throat the entire poison that emerged from the churning of the ocean which was done by the demons and the angels brought forth a poison which no one could handle and only Shiva was the panacea to deal with that poison and shiva takes that poison and he gulps it down and mother parvati comes and holds his neck and that's how the poison stays on his neck and his neck becomes blue and he is known from then as neela kantha symbolic of the sacrifice that the lord does for the sake of the world for the welfare of you me welfare of entire humanity neela kantha suta suta means son so ganesha is the son of lord shiva is the son of neela kantha and ganesha too is an epitome of sacrifice like father like son we know how when ganesha was writing the mahabharata dictated by vyasa and he was writing non stop because that was the condition put forth by vyasa that he should write without a break and ganesha says that he should dictate without any interruption and that is the contract between both of them and as ganesha is diligently doing his job we know how his stylus breaks and when this happens his pen is broken and he immediately without a single thought breaks his task and continues to write no second of second thinking work has to go on and any amount of sacrifice for that work is not a loss ganesha is an epitome of dedication to duty bhagwan talks about duty devotion discipline and you find in ganesha the embodiment of all these virtues for an elephant the tusk is the most prestigious organ it adds beauty to its face we know how the ivory is valued all over the world but here was ganesha without thinking anything breaking his tusk and continuing his job he didn't think oh oh my god i'm going to look ugly can i not borrow a pen can i not ask vyasa to stop nothing work has to go on duty is god that was the dedication that was the determination 
and that was the right discrimination too when one has this kind of determination and devotion to duty bhagwan says anybody can become divine and that is what makes ganesha so delightful it is all these deeds of duty dedication determination discrimination that makes ganesha absolutely delightful and even though he is not even a human he is half animal and half human yet he is the lord of all the divine beings the leader of the celestial gods and the darling of his father that is what is conveyed in neela kantha sutta gajanana finally we come to the last line nitya shubhanga gajanana nitya means eternal and shubhanga comes from shubha meaning auspicious and anga means limb every limb of lord ganesha is auspicious and teaches us a important lesson Swami says his big head denotes simple living and high thinking it depicts wisdom intelligence discrimination foresightedness his big ears signify that listening is an art they say the most useful asset of a person is not a head full of knowledge but a heart full of love with ears open to listen and hands willing to help wisdom is the reward for a lifetime of listening when you would have preferred to and the best and the most powerful way to connect to another person is not to talk but to listen just listen and that is what is conveyed through ganesha's big ears his small mouth indicates that we should talk less his well built arms suggest that we should work more his small eyes remind us to stay focused to have a bird's view of everything and be always alert his long nose and curved trunk indicate that there is no straight path to success we must be flexible adaptable his large stomach shows his ability to digest and accept both good and bad and talking about his big foot bhagwan says that elephant is a symbol of might and magnitude the elephant's foot is larger than that of any other animal and the elephant can make its way through the densest jungle and swami says in this way it signifies the quality of a leader who shows the way for others the elephant creates a pathway for itself it's a trail blazer and the elephant is known for its fidelity and gratitude in any circumstance it will never forget its master even in its last moments if it hears the voice of its master it will open its eyes and look out for him it will sacrifice anything for its master and swami says intelligence without gratitude is valueless gratitude is the most important attitude that every devotee should possess when it comes to life the critical thing is whether we take things for granted or we take things with gratitude as they say it is the healthiest of all the human emotions the more you express gratitude for what you have the more likely you will have even more to express gratitude for it is the key to having a peaceful heart it is the sweetest thing in a seeker's life in all human life gratitude is the sweetest thing because if there is gratitude in your heart they say there will be sweetness in your eyes and that is how we find ganesha so sweet so beautiful to look at the most charming among all the gods every little one always is fascinated with ganesha because of the sweetness in his eyes and the sweetness comes bhagwan says because of gratitude and that is the most powerful lesson sacrifice and gratitude that ganesha conveys and every limb of this delightful delectable form of the lord teaches us such profound lessons and if only we can meditate on this form we will find ourselves elevated as we sing this bhajan so let us ruminate and lose ourselves in the beauty and the sublimity of this lovely form that bhagwan has gifted to fill our lives with joy to fill our lives with auspiciousness and to ensure that all obstacles on our spiritual path gets obliterated so let us unravel the power of the ganesha principle and fill ourselves with 
this auspiciousness as we sing this bhajan let's hear this bhajan as it is sung in the prashant nila mandir by the students of bhagwan's university jay 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 hi gajanana jay 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 hi gajanana jay 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 hi gajanana to the end of the current episode of Radio Sai Vintage Bhajan Classroom. If you have any queries or comments, as always, you can write to listener at radiosai.org. With heart full of gratitude, we offer this endeavor at the lotus feet for most beautiful, beloved Bhagwan. Thank you.